Hey guys, welcome back to Adam C. So in this video, I'll be talking about how to start coding in your first year. So there will be two types of students watching this video. The ones who already know some coding and the ones who took bio in their plus two. So I'll be giving my personal solutions for both these cases in this video. First, let's talk about the bio people. So in case you are in your second semester and KTU in particular and you haven't coded before, then I would totally recommend you to watch the 100k coding playlist by Crossroads. And the first six videos is based on C programming itself and the KTU examinations would be pretty easy after just watching these six videos itself. So suppose you were a bio student and you just joined an engineering college and you want to start programming. In that case, you will find all the people around you starting with web development, app development, machine learning, artificial intelligence, all these fields. And you will be totally confused uh, on what to start with or which programming language to start with. Because uh, I heard that it's like 785 programming languages and it's really confusing for a beginner to start with. So personally, I would recommend you to start with an object-oriented programming language. And that means Python, Java, or C++. And personally, I would recommend you to start with C++ itself because as a beginner, C++ is easier compared to Java. And in case you want to start with Java, then there is this awesome playlist by Kunal Kushwaha where he starts with the basics of programming and goes still the all the data structures, algorithm, community covering part as well. So you can either start with Java or C++. And in case you are planning to start with C++, there is this awesome course by Code with Harry where he starts from the basics as well. Or you can, or if you are ready to spend a few amount of money, then I would recommend you to uh, buy this uh, Udemy course by Abdul Bari where he even starts with the basics as well. So after learning the basics of programming like loops, statements, etc., I would recommend you to solve a few problems on hacker rank. And the main motive behind this is to build your logic or logic and how you approach a problem. Or you can either build a small project like a student administration system or banking system or a small tic-tac-toe game. All these will be really helpful in building your logic. And to be honest, in the end, the language you pick for, uh, the first language you pick doesn't really matter. What really matters is how you approach a problem or how, you, how your logic works. So after you're comfortable with the programming language, I would recommend you to start with development. And in development itself, there are two options, web as well as app. So most of the people usually start with web development. Even I started with web development but I didn't really find it interesting because mainly or because of the CSS part and I really suck at designing and positioning of elements. So I switched, switched to Flutter, that is app development and uh, designing and all these things are really easy in Flutter when compared to the web development. So how should you learn development? Personally, I would recommend you to join a community like Community Classroom, BlueLearn or TingerHub. And there will be lots and lots of mentors who are always ready to help you get started and clear your doubts. So after learning the basics of development by watching a few YouTube tutorials or a Udemy course, the next thing which you should do is to build projects. So while building projects, make sure that you are seeking help from your community members and also learn how to exactly Google for the steps you need. For example, you are building on an e-commerce application and the first thing which you need is to make a sign up page so you google how to sign up how to implement a sign up page in flutter using firebase as the backend so you get an amazing blogs from medium as well as pub.dev and they will be uh, explaining how to make a sign up page from scratch using flutter and uh, i personally like reading blogs more than videos because blogs saves a lot of time rather than watching a whole YouTube video. Also make sure that all the projects which you're doing, you're sharing it in your socials like LinkedIn and Twitter. Also you can make a portfolio site containing your skills and projects as well. You can find my portfolio by visiting www.adamc.me. And 
in that website, I have showcased the list of projects I have done, my Git repository, my resume, and uh, the skills, uh, services I do, etc. So make sure that you build a portfolio because it really makes you stand out from the rest of the coders. So now let's talk about second type of people, those who already know some kind of programming from the 12 standard. So the first thing which you should do is to brush up the coding language which you already know. And you can either watch a simple tutorial or the one which I personally recommend is to open hacker rank and uh, practice a few problems and thereby you will be able to brush up the skills which you already knew but you kind of forgot because of lack of touch. So after brushing up your coding skills, you have two options here. You can either start with development just like the bio people did or you can either go with basic data search algorithms. Personally, as a KTU student, I recommend you to start with development itself because in KTU, we have data search algorithms from SEM3 only. So as I mentioned before, in development, we have app development as well as web development. We also have machine learning, artificial intelligence, blockchain, game development and many other stuff. So I haven't really tried out the game development and all these stuff, but I have read and I have heard from people that the uh, development side, that's app and web, have more opportunities and internship opportunities when compared to the other blockchain, machine learning, because as a fresher, it is easier to get an internship in the development side. So I would recommend you to start with the basic development because as a software developer, it is always good to have the basic app and uh, web development skills. Also make sure that you are learning how to use Git and GitHub because it and, because they are the most important tool for any developer and make sure that you are pushing all the code which you are writing, I mean the projects which you are doing, make sure to push, push all of them to your GitHub repository. As I mentioned before, the easiest and the fastest way to learn any framework or language is to start building projects. And also make sure that you participate in, in hackathons once in a while. While participating in a hackathon, you learn how to code with your teammate and how to work together as a team. Also, you learn how to make projects from nothing in a particular time span of 24 hours or 48 hours. And the one main thing which I have to say is to stick to one particular framework and mastering that framework first rather than trying out all these stuffs simultaneously. Yeah, I said try web and app, but uh, when I first started out, I learned web. I tried web for two weeks, and then I heard Flutter is better, so I switched to Flutter. Then I saw my friends doing web development, then I again switched to web development, then I saw some people doing community coding. So I switched to community coding for one week and uh, I was kind of confused because I tried to put my hands on all these fields and in the end I was really confused on what to do exactly because I kept forgetting all these things. So I would personally recommend you to pick up one field which you find interesting and start building projects on that particular framework. And uh, the thing which I found out that once you master one particular framework then the others uh, will be easier to learn as well because when I learned Futter, it took me about 3-4 months to uh, learn the basics and uh, build some projects with it. And uh, when I started learning React, I found out that Flutter and React is really really similar. Most of the things in Flutter is also there in React and uh, learning React wasn't that difficult because almost all the frameworks have the same logic and uh, same functionality. So the main thing here is to switch, uh, stick to one particular framework just because the people around you start doing community coding and DSA or machine learning uh, you shouldn't uh, completely do it out of peer pressure you should first take the framework or language which you find interesting and then start building projects until you're comfortable with it and then only switch to the next platform or next framework and uh, try out soft so I hope you found this video useful and uh, in case you have any feedbacks or suggestions to make or any particular video request make sure to comment down below and uh, in case you are starting the code I would totally recommend you to start this 30 day code challenge and uh, share your le everyday learnings on Twitter or LinkedIn. <laughs>